Hey guys and welcome to your weekly horoscope for Monday the 27th of July going through until Sunday the 2nd of August 2020. Thanks for joining me. It's a pleasure to be with you today. This weekly horoscope I have looked at what the planets are doing up in the sky. I'm going to go through each day one by one to give you an idea of what energy the planets are creating up in the sky and how that's going to affect you watching this right now. These readings are for all signs of the zodiac, they're for everyone who watches. Also bear in mind that my horoscopes are based on UK time and yeah, let's have a look at what's coming up for you. So starting with Monday the 27th of July, we have the moon going into Scorpio at 4.13 in the morning. So the moon is the most sensitive part of the chart, it's really going to affect the way you feel. Scorpio is a water sign and it's the water sign that has a lot of control over the emotions and it's able to uncover hidden secrets and it's interested in the hidden taboo side of things. So with this move you immediately get a lot of control of your feelings. The moon then opposes Uranus, the planet of change and transformation and chaos and that's in the earth sign of Taurus. So with your emotional control the axis of Scorpio and Taurus is really nice because it's emotional control on the Scorpio side and Taurus on the physical side. So the body food, what you enjoy, what you perceive as pleasurable. With the opposition there, it's anything goes. I'm looking for new changes. I'm up for adventures and new discoveries. So that's really nice and open-minded. The moon then squares the sun in Leo. Happy birthday to the Leos. And the sun in Leo is really bright and confident. It forms friction with the moon in Scorpio because the moon in Scorpio is looking at the hidden and the dark. So they're at odds with one another. Venus, the planet of love and beauty, is in the communication sign Gemini. And Gemini is the third sign of the zodiac. And an air sign is all about communication and keeping things moving and getting things across in an upbeat kind of way. So that's really happy in the placement. And it squares the outer planet Neptune, the water planet of dreams and intuition. That's in the sign that it rules Pisces. So that's really, really happy there. Although Neptune in Pisces, you could see is this kind of energy of this mist that's kind of hovering over everything and this kind of emotional, this added emotional edge that you can feel like an undercurrent of human emotions. I think it's people are very connected at the moment and they're very tapped into what the other person is feeling and Neptune really facilitates that. The outer planets they take ages to move so that's a kind of gradual thing we're going to experience over a couple of years, a few years. And um, Venus in Gemini also quincuxes Jupiter the lucky planet in Capricorn. So Jupiter in Capricorn gives you its good luck when you use Capricorn kind of energy that's about working, focusing on something being really decisive and saying, I'm going to apply myself, I'm going to move A to B, and I'm going to get this done in a physical, practical way by using my energy to get things done. So with that combination on Monday, we've got a lot going on, and as a result, you're gonna get strong messages by your feelings and allow those to guide you in the right direction, okay? With all this chaos in the earthy kind of realm and good luck and good fortune and change, the thing that you can trust the most is your intuition, your feelings. So you can be confident and follow your happiness on Monday the 27th of July. It's also um, a great day for luck in love, especially if it involves work or new projects that you're working on. Amazing. Okay, Tuesday the 28th of July, we've got the moon still in Scorpio, so that ability to uncover hidden secrets is really strong still. It forms a harmonious trine with Mercury, the communication planet, which is in Cancer. Mercury is the, yeah, the communication planet that rules Gemini and um, Virgo, and it's about receiving information or giving information out. And in Cancer, it really focuses on the emotional side of communication. So things that are unspoken, where you just get a vibe, all of those things are heightened. And with the Scorpio moon, also water, we've got loads and loads of emotional energy. 
on top of the communicative energy and also the Scorpio moon trines Neptune, the water planet, in Pisces again. So we've got the moon in water, Scorpio, the communication planet in water, Cancer, and Neptune in Pisces. So we've got the whole lot of um, water signs there. The Scorpio moon then forms a sextile with the outer planets, Jupiter, Pluto, and Capricorn. Jupiter, good luck, Pluto, change and transformation, and Saturn, structures and security. Um, we've got a different kind of axis in play now on Tuesday. We've got the Capricorn um, Cancer energy. And that's very much about, again, taking the initiative to either control the people you love or the environment that you're in. So on Tuesday, the ability to control your feelings and to channel those feelings into a productive outcome that is what you're best at you may feel a little bit torn you may feel a little bit do i focus on the people i love or the actual things i can control the the important thing isn't whether you do the physical or the emotional i would say i would say it, what's important is that you set some real goals because it's about being in charge and saying okay i can control this situation by applying myself also, on Tuesday, anything that involves travel, meeting new people, or starting new job opportunities, um, that is especially favored by the outer planets, Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn. So anything that comes up in that sense as an opportunity, make sure you grab it. And when it comes to talking to other people and making deals and signing off on contracts and things, make sure everything is above board and as you want it to be officially. Don't take things on a handshake or, you know, things are just, um, it's a spoken agreement. Make sure things are actually in place. Neptune may make things a little murky, you see. Things that you think <clears throat> are just unspoken and that everyone assumes that and knows that, you may be surprised. So make sure that things are spelled out and you make things clear so there isn't room for misunderstanding. On Wednesday the 29th of July we've got the moon going into Sagittarius at 7.26 in the morning. So we're moving into fire now. Sagittarius is about galloping off into the universe and exploring it and really doing something independently that you are interested in. So this Sagittarius moon then it forms a trine with the Sun in Leo. So we've got the center of our solar system, the Sun. Fire, fire, fire. Leo, fire sign. And Sagittarius, fire signs. And they form a trine now with Chiron in Aries. Chiron is the wounded healer. So we've got gone from the Moon and Mercury and Neptune being in water to the Moon and the Sun and Chiron being in fire. So things immediately lift from the kind of water level to burning brightly and absorbing lots of air and setting a purpose and warming things up and heating things up. The moon also forms a quincux with Uranus in Taurus, so the planet of the unexpected in the earth sign of Taurus there. So with all that, Wednesday the 29th, it's time for an adventure, hooray. Things really heat up with the moon particularly shifting into the, the sign of Sagittarius, which really wants to make things as big as possible. It's ruled by Jupiter, the lucky planet. And I always love this, that, that Sagittarius is in the middle of winter in the Northern Hemisphere, and the fire has to come from within, so you can look inside of yourself for strength and joy. Um, make sure that you don't rush into any kind of unplanned opportunities that suddenly arise on Wednesday the 29th, especially if you've done no research or if you've never heard of this thing. So if there is the potential to kind of take your time and to um, recharge your batteries by having fun, then make sure you use that opportunity. So lie in the, lie in the sun or read a good book um, and just do things that you find enjoyable and nurturing. That's the best way to yeah, avoid things that seem great but then don't deliver and make you feel like, oh, that was a bad decision. Instead, if you focus on yourself and what makes you happy in the here and now with what you've already got, then you can really lift yourself up and really raise your vibration a lot on Wednesday. Fab. Thursday, the 30th of July, we have Mercury in Cancer still. So communication in a very emotional, sensitive way. If you have a lot of dreams or you get messages from your dreams or um, from other people, 
or your connection through meditation that's really strong or weak that's something that this time of year we've got this energy there kind of given to you so if you're trying to th figure things out for yourself if you're trying to figure yourself out if you're trying to understand what you like and what you need that's been a big theme recently and it's important that you continue to explore that this is kind of a gift of this time of year that you can get to know yourself better so that opposes the lucky planet Jupiter in Capricorn urging you to work outside of the home and going out into the public sphere instead of the personal domestic private sphere so we've got Mercury now opposing Jupiter, so Earth opposing water, and then we've got a trine with Neptune and Pisces. So this um, overarching kind of feeling of I feel what you feel is still really strong, but it's also tinged with a sense of I want to break free and do something independently by myself. And I want to do something practical where I can actually see practical results. The Sagittarius moon now opposes Venus planet of love Aphrodite in Gemini still so that's like a revolving door of love I see I think that's really positive and the Sagittarius moon also uh, for the first time this week now we're getting Mars involved the red planet the planet that rules Aries and it's in the sign that it rules Aries and it's really happy there so Sag is fire Aries is fire those two forming this harmonious trine is really positive in the sense that you get a lot of energy and focus and the moon also squares Neptune in Pisces. So it's kind of holding the water at bay a little bit with fire. Those two elements don't really go well together. It's, you're going to feel conflicted. It's one thing completely or another. So on Thursday, because of this, you may feel especially torn. It started to kind of feel, mm, do I go this way or this way on Tuesday? Now on Thursday, that gets really, really strong. It's likely that your social life is a lot more active and complicated by Thursday and your relationships generally aren't that clear. It may be a little bit murky still um, and may make you feel a number of conflicting emotions. So it's really important to keep things simple on Thursday and to continue setting practical goals for yourself and practicing those and making sure you get things done and being consistent. Friday the 31st of July, final day of the month, we have the moon going into Capricorn at 11.59 in the morning, so just for lunch, UK time. And the moon in Capricorn, it's really hitting one of the earthiest signs now and going from all of this kind of um, really fast moving energy, so water, really, really quick, fire, doesn't get much quicker, and now it's boom, hitting the brakes, landing on this giant slab of rock Capricorn and it's really like hey, things step back a little bit and you get a little bit of a breather that's what I felt but when I was looking at this energy via the charts anyway Friday it was like you're 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 you've been on the gas pedal all week really trying to get things done and moving forward and exciting yay and then by Friday it's like okay let's put the brake on and let's actually see where we're at so this Capricorn moon then it also forms a trine with Uranus and Taurus, so the unexpected if you apply yourself in a practical way. It squares Chiron, so it forms friction with the wounded healer in Aries. And the Leo Sun then trines Chiron as well in Aries, and it forms a quincux with this Capricorn moon, so this Earth sign. So we've got a lot more fire and Earth on Friday. You feel a lot more supported by other people and you feel a lot more secure in your physical practical life as a result and you the, the structures in your life just feel more reliable so if you rely on people you can rely on people if you rely on your bank balance to give you a sense of oh, everything's in control then that will support you it's having that yeah if you have kind of put things in place to scaffold certain things to make them more accessible and easier then those will really pay off so ask yourself what is it that makes you feel supported and secure in life and if you don't know it's a really good day to find out so the feeling i got when i was writing this was that you've landed after this kind of perilous journey so imagine you've just come off a pirate ship here on friday it's a really lucky day where initiate initiating a conversation uh, with someone or 
proposing some sort of business idea, that's going to pay off big time in giving you a new focus in life because it'll lead to something. So if you have that kind of could be, couldn't be, possibly going to an event or maybe not, make sure you use the opportunity. What won't work is putting pressure on your relationships. So you ought to do this, why sh this should be, you know, those words ought and it has to be and must and all of those things. If you find yourself getting into that mode, then just again, use that ability to step back a little bit and put the brakes on and say, nope, I'm not doing that. Instead, I'm going to focus my energy on being practical and taking this um, grounded, secure feeling and actually doing something to make it bigger and even more comforting and permanent. Yeah. Okay, first day of August, Saturday the 1st. The moon in Capricorn now sits on top of the outer planets Pluto and Jupiter in Capricorn. So transformation and good luck. So work to transform your life and good luck is on your side. Mercury is still in Cancer. So also anyone who is trying to tap into their real self. Who am I? What am I doing here? What's my life purpose? What's, what, what am I supposed to do? If those are questions that kind of have been on your mind, but you haven't been able to answer those, that's still a really good time to really tap into that kind of emotion. And it, to be honest, it really is for most of the week because you have that access to that. I think it's something that people will still discover in future. It's this energy that connects all of us to one another and why we can sense things about each other but we don't have a scientific name for it yet or we haven't been able to discover it yet and that net that connects you with other people other souls is super super strong and you're really in tune with it so emotions and answers and feelings about yourself where the answers lie your higher self spirit i mean call it what you will you have access to that and that's why you're able to really take those those insights for yourself and apply them. Pluto is in Capricorn in the sense that I'm uncovering the hidden secrets here, the things that are taboo usually. Who am I? You don't go around asking yourself that every day. But you are, if you ask it on Saturday, you can really get a great insight that you can then use to change your actual physical life. So on Saturday the 1st, you may feel the need to make a drastic change to keep things interesting. So in the external world, it may not be the best time to do that. So any huge kind of uninformed life changing decisions that feel super urgent that you need to make right away. Try and avoid those if you can. Instead, focus on existing relationships for change. And that includes yourself and other people, but especially use the opportunity to look at yourself. That's huge. That doesn't come along every day. So once you do have access to that, to the hidden realms, to the Akashic records, as some people call them, then make sure you open that door and you get all the information you can. Finally, on Sunday, the 2nd of August, the moon goes into Aquarius at 6, 12 in the afternoon. So 12 minutes past six. Aquarius is an air sign. So now we're really lifting things and it's about communicating with groups of people. It's about the future innovation being scientific and uh, analytical about what's going on and trying to educate others with that for the greater good. The sun is in Leo and that forms a square with Uranus and Taurus. Uranus, again, the unexpected. So be confident, listen and connect and learn and see what it is that interests you and you can affect great change again on Sunday the 2nd. All together, those three um, planets, they give you a lot more clarity and natural confidence that simply kind of oozes out of you and rises to the surface here. So have conversations that may have seemed difficult before and resolve unfinished business that you've got with other people. So in your personal life, the clarity of mind that you now get on Sunday the 2nd is really going to ensure that you do well and that you have a good time. So anything that seemed awkward or difficult Make sure that you face that and 
not just to face the music and get it over with but to really do well and to finish something off and to get a sense of closure and yes i understand and i can connect with others and be of service it's a super positive end to the week there so that's amazing that's what i get for you coming up from monday the 27th to sunday the 2nd 27th of july until sunday the 2nd of august I hope it gives you an idea of what you'll be working with this week. If you'd like a personal reading with me, then please get in touch via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. Once you get that, just click on book your reading to book an appointment with me. I use astrology in my personal readings. So I draw up your birth chart. I take your place of birth, date of birth, and time of birth. Then I've got a snapshot of this guy at the moment you were born. Excuse me. Once I've got that, I can read your chart so I can see your life purpose, your vocational aptitudes, love, romance, strengths, weaknesses, travel and uh, the future, what's coming up in love and health and when the best time is to buy a new business and to sell and to um, start new projects and hire people, that kind of thing. So if you have any questions at all, also making changes to your physical appearance. I mean, it's the summer, lots of people are looking to look their best. Both Mercury, the communication planet, and Venus, they're both direct. So, you know, people are doing things. Um, any questions, just get in touch with me for a personal reading via the website, gregoryscott.com. If you like this video, then please hit like, yeah, and give it a thumbs up. Um, hit the subscribe button and share the video online if you like this reading. It's lovely to speak to you this week. I hope um, you're feeling a lot better after uh, the new moon from last week that was dramatic and crazy so hopefully you're feeling that has now settled and you're feeling more focused keep me posted on what you experienced this week in the comments below just let us know what's going on with you and like i said if you want to speak to me just go to the website gregoryscott.com have a wonderful week and i'll speak to you next week